This is not good. Should not have done that. I am stuck. I'm on the stairs. I got my garbage can. I try to take the garbage out. I don't want to go down, but I'm not going to get hurt. These are concrete steel. <laughs> I'm turning all over. I went this way because it's the sh it's a little it's shorter to go this way. There's not as far to walk to the garbage can, but I can go around the other way, and there's no steps, stairs, or anything. I made it about three quarters of the way. If you look to see what I did here, see if I could just kind of... Gosh, I don't think I like this video. I made it about three quarters of the way. It ain't just my low back, it's my leg too, my hematoma. I call it a hematoma leg. That's my nickname for this. It's really an ulcer now, they call it an ulcer. But, trying to do a video here show how I struggle walking but I didn't didn't take my walker it's kind of a juggle for me to take my walker and the garbage can but I guess I should have done that anyway it's not a very far walk to the garbage can either it's like seven minutes a normal person could walk from my door here to the garbage can, dump it, and be back within five to seven minutes. It's not like a long walk to the garbage can, but it is when you got back problems like mine. I should not have done this. This is dangerous. I'm gonna hurt myself. And I don't want to hurt myself. It's a concrete steel. Oh, Jesus, help me. Please don't let me fall. Matters worse about the crap in my pants. I gotta go to the bathroom really fast. Please, Lord, don't let me crap in my pants. Oh, I want crap in my pants. This is an ABC News election update. Now reporting. David Newark. Good morning. It's now 535 here in the east. We are allowing all of our stations across the country to join us now with the breaking news. We are projecting at this hour the 47th president of the United States. Uh, Donald Trump will be uh, elected to return to the White House. Uh, not consecutive terms, we mentioned a moment ago, as we were on our air with our coverage. The first since Grover Cleveland uh, to serve non-consecutive presidential terms. Donald Trump uh, returning to the White House as the 47th president of the United States. He does so uh, with Wisconsin now uh, in his win column. Of course, there are a number of states on the map. Uh, that still looked pretty favorable for Donald Trump tonight, but Wisconsin was the state that put him over the map, uh, getting him to 279 at this point, and Kamala Harris's 219 electoral votes. I'm going to quickly uh, rejoin the team here uh, so that the entire network can hear a little bit of what we're uh, our early analysis. And, and John, as you and I have been saying all night long, this is an extraordinary uh, political comeback. You say it's it's we, we've never seen anything like it. Uh, look, uh, the greatest political comeback in American history and a victory unlike any that Donald Trump has ever seen, because not only does he win what appears to be a decisive electoral college victory, it seems like he is on 
the verge of winning the popular vote as well. So he comes back to the White House. And the liberal media is lying again. Are they lying again? Trump followers? I don't understand. I don't understand. I just don't like his character, but that's just my opinion if it's worth anything. And the nearly half the country that voted against him, many of them see him as not somebody that they simply didn't want in the White House, but see him as a threat. So now the question is. How does he convince those people uh, that, that uh, you know that he can be a president for all Americans, including those who didn't vote for him? What well, whatever. I'm not going to go cause a riot. I'm not going to say it was rigged. I got four years. I got 48 months. Whenever he goes to the office to go vote again, I normally vote Republican. But I just didn't, his character was, to me, worse than a Democrat's. That's the only reason why I wanted Harris to win, because his character just didn't fit the Oval Office for me. But it's not up to me, it's up to the American people. It's not what I want, it's what the election, the voice of America wants, that's important to me. And if that's what they want, that's what we're going to get. Got four years from now to go vote it out. I'm not going to go cause a riot. I'm not going to say it's rigged. You know what I'm saying, folks? Anyway. Sun's coming up, and I've seen this car there before. That's, let me get my camera in here exactly right. Hold on. If I can. There we go. That lady or guy, whoever that is, in the car is fixing to drive off. You know what that is? That's a Lexus hatchback. That's a Lexus hatchback. I think that's a, can tell. I think that's a woman in there, but that is a Lexus hatch. That white car there in front of me is a Lexus hatchback. I got like a Lexus, and I love a hatchback. You know, a hatchback's kind of like a mini SUV. There it goes. There it goes. A Lexus. Or, I'm sorry, a hatchback is just like a mini SUV. That's pretty cool. It's like a mini SUV that's like front wheel drive. I like a hatchback and I do like a Lexus and that's pretty cool. <laughs> a car like that's so. a... Look at that crazy sky. Look at that sky. Here comes the sun. Do, do, do. Here comes the sun. And I say it's all right. Although this camera shot doesn't look like it's too dark, it really is. My camera has got this backlighting system where it lights the picture up. It's actually a little, the sun is coming up. You see the sun coming up there, but it's darker. Proof of that, look at the lights. Look at the, see the lights are all still on. The, the um, street lights are on. See how the street lights are on? So it's darker than what it looks, but I pulled into the wrong place. I'm trying to go over here to National Fitness to get some exercise. I knew I'd do this one of these days. I think this is the first and only time I've ever done that. I should have pulled in right here. I should have pulled in right here. <sighs> I get people ask me sometimes, how come 
you're able to go to National Fitness and work out if you've got spinal cord and back problems. Well, the doctor that ordered me to come here, he told me to come here. He actually gave me a prescription so I could come here. It was from my pain clinic over my back and neck. And my back and my neck problem causes me to where I can't do as much. I can't walk as much. I can't do as much with my arms and my hands that I need to do. So he was telling me, which is the truth, obviously. It's pretty obvious it's the truth. I got, you got to have exercise. Got to have some kind of exercise. So I come here to get the exercise. When I'm in here, I don't even use over 20 pounds worth of weight. Sometimes I use zero. I use five, 10, 15. I never go over 20 pounds worth of weight. And sometimes it's just, instead of a workout, it's just physical therapy here. Or I'm using zero, zero weight. So I try to get, and I'm really not getting enough exercise here. I do 20 minutes a day. Better than nothing is the way I look at it. Uh, better than nothing. I, re I really need more, way more than 20 minutes a day. That's all I do here. 20 minutes a day is all I do here, and that's not enough. But better than nothing is the way I look at it. So. Well, I'm on my way to Kroger's. I'm trying my best to be as tight, 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 tight as I can on my money. and That's why I'm going to Kroger's. I've got some burritos I bought from the grocery store. And they'd be good with tater chips, I think. And... Kroger's has got this Kroger brand potato chips that's pretty good. They're pretty tasty. And it's a pretty decent sized bag, too. And they're, it's $2. Cheapest bag of chips I've seen in a while. And they're pretty good taste and quantity as well.
not going the interstate way this time. I'm going the back way. I just don't feel like going the interstate. Now, at the angle of the sun, I'm afraid it's going to blind me, and I don't want to be blinded on the interstate. And this way, there's trees in the way to block the sun. So that's so why I'm going this way. I hate it when the daggone sun is just right there on the road and you can't see anything. That puts a, a glare over my glass. It's like I'm totally blinded. And, you know, if I'm going to drive a car, I like to be able to see where I'm going. Wouldn't you? Why would you know? but I don't know. I want to get these tater chips here that's two dollars a bag and also I want to go buy crystals see what them see what those sausage things cost biscuits cost because if they're on sale I'll get them but if they're not I ain't getting them it's too much money pretty good. Uh, actually pretty good. Find uh, that road that goes by. Ain't nobody coming that way. I 
it's too hard. I better, yeah, I should have went the other way. It's okay, I'd go either way. I can go either way. It might have been better if I went the other way and then go down that road, Town and Country, is that the name of it? The road that goes there in front of Best Buy. That's what I was thinking about doing, going the other way. I'm gonna go by and see what those sausage biscuits are. I'm telling you right now, if they are over five dollars, ain't no way. I'll just tell them no, I ain't doing it. Two sausage biscuits if over five dollars, not from my wallet. I'll tell them that too. They got their sausage biscuits is pretty good. They're they're kind of small though, like the crystal burgers are small. Um their sausage is like, is like, it's spicy, but not overwhelmingly spicy. I like spicy food, especially, especially spicy sausage, but I don't like it over the top spicy where it's setting your mouth on fire. I just like, just, to, I like to have some kick, kick to it, you know what I mean? Went there at the wrong spot. Yeah, that's the wrong spot. It's on down. Eight thirty two in the morning. I've been up four hours. This kind of feels like lunch, to be honest with you. That's what I don't like about waking up so early. I hate that. It's like 8 o'clock feels like it's lunch. Do I need to go right here? No, I gotta go one more damn. One more damn thing. Turn yellow. I think I got through it. I hope I got through it. I don't run yellow lights. Not on purpose anyway. This is over five dollars, ain't from my wallet. I don't like if I buy lunch or whatever, I usually stay within five dollars. Sometimes I might go five dollars and fifty cents, maybe. What's the price on your sausage biscuits? We can get them. You can get them two for five forty-five, or you can pay four dollars for one. You can get two for how much? Five forty-five. And then tax on top of that. Is that like after tax? Five forty-five or what? So it's five forty-five after tax. Okay, I didn't want to pay. I really didn't want to pay over five dollars, but so it's five forty-five. This five forty-five after tax, I reckon. Okay, they're pretty good. All right, they are. They do got them on sale now. Oh, five. See, I didn't really want to go over five dollars, but forty-five more cents. Here's five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Five. Thirty. Gosh, 
Oh, this is really close to it. Is that enough? If not, let me know. That's really close to 545. There you go, buddy. All right, thanks. I don't know why he gave me that look like. He gave me that look like that. I find really didn't want to spend over five dollars for him, but I go forty-five more cents, I guess. These things right here are pretty good. I've had them before. They're they're uh, they're, they're small, like Crystal Burger small. I don't know if you can see how small this is or not, but. But they're real juicy, and they're, these are things that are juicy, and they're spicy. I know I need this around my waist, Don. Make sure you got it in gear. These things right here to me, they're just the right amount of spice in the sausage. It's kind of a little hot, but not real overbearing. And then the biscuit part is really moist. That's a really good biscuit, folks. Hello, you have reached. I'm either on the phone or away from my desk. 
Please leave me a voicemail with your name and date of birth and a detailed message um, about what you're needing, and I will give you a call back as soon as possible. Calls um, and voicemails that are left before 2 p.m. will be returned on the same day. If you have an emergency, please call 911 or go to the emergency room. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is... Timothy Collins, uh, you can reach me at this. I'm just having an issue with my pain problem plus pain medicine. And when I went to my hematologist last week, they said my liver enzymes were elevated. And I'm trying to figure out, I just need somebody to go over my medicine, see what I'm taking. I don't want to take nothing to make my liver enzymes be elevated. So I just want to talk with somebody about that. When At your convenience, there's no hurry. Just whenever. I appreciate you. Thanks. This is my home care nurse. I gotta ask her about this. I gotta ask her. I don't know if you can see that. It's all blood work. Here more blood work. Pages and pages of blood work they've done on me. I just gotta ask her about this blood work and tell her what they told me. Um, I've been taking Tylenol Extra Strength Arthritis twice a day, Celebrex, and Gabapentin. And my liver enzymes are elevated. So I don't know, I just need to talk with somebody. I, I'm going to be talk with, I'm going to talk with my doctor about it next week. I'm going in and talk. My liver enzymes were 50. What does that mean? I don't know. They said that's elevated. Before, six months ago, when they weren't elevated, they were 28. So it went from 28 to whatever 50 means. Now, I researched it online. And I don't know... Um, for sure, this is what I need to talk to the doctor about. But it looks like 65 would be the danger zone number. Anything above 65 in the blood work for enzymes of liver. If I'm correct, then I don't know. That's just what I researched online. I'm not sure. That's what I need to talk to the nurse about, my doctor about next week. Um, wouldn't that be something? I'm having liver problems, and then now I can't take pain medicine, and I'm struggling with pain. I, don't, I already got a problem with pain, and then I can't take nothing for it, really. I don't know. The other day, I was at my sleep apnea. I'm trying to get this camera right. I was at my sleep apnea doctor's appointment. And I see her about every six months. And my machine gives her a lot of data about me, like how long I've been in the bed, how many sleep apneas I had, if my mask is leaking. I don't know what all that thing gives her. But one of the things it gives her is how many hours I'm spending in the bed with the CPAP on my face. And if I'm in the bed with the CPAP on, that usually means I'm trying to sleep. And... The machine shows that in the last six months, my average time wearing the CPAP was nine hours per night. And she's like, are you in the bed nine hours a night? That's a little bit too long. I told my sleep apnea doctor, no. I, I said, yeah, I am, I am in the bed nine hours, but I'm not sleeping the whole time. It takes me about nine hours to get at least six hours of sleep. And she asked me why. I said, well, sometimes I just wake up. It might be, even though I sleep with a sleep apnea machine, sometimes, see, I stop breathing without the machine 92 times per hour of the night. With that machine, I stop less than five times per hour. Usually it's like one or two times. So one or two times I may wake up with sleep apnea, but I was telling her that I have chronic pain problems, not only in the day, but all the way through the night, I'm, I go wake up many times, many, many times in the night with chronic pain. I was telling her about that. So anyway, this is, uh, 
a test they're going to do on me tonight. This is a fancy little watch. I put this. Let me show you. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want to mess it up. I, I ain't supposed to turn this thing on till tonight. But I put this thing on my arm and then this thing goes over my finger. I think I got to take. So I got to sleep with this thing on my hand tonight. Why? It's going to be reading my O2 levels. Because when you stop breathing, it affects your O2 levels. But I told her that I don't only, I'm not only waking up, I told her I'm waking up with pain problems too. That thing also doesn't only show my oxygen levels, but it probably shows how fast my heart's beating. So they may see in the middle of the night how my heart's beating too. When your heart beats really, really fast, that's usually pain. Especially when you're laying in the bed trying to sleep. Now it could be too, where I stop, if you stop breathing, that'll make your heart beat fast too. But see, it should show oxygen levels drop, heart start beating really fast. If it shows that my oxygen levels didn't drop, if it shows that my oxygen levels did not drop and my heart just started beating fast, then that's probably pain. So they're gonna be seeing, they're gonna be doing an investigation with me tonight with my sleep with that thing. And I don't know, usually when they do that, the next thing they do is sleep study in the hospital. So I may be going to the hospital soon for no sleep study. Usually when they do that, not always, but most of the time when they do this test at night, the next test is the one in the hospital. So anyway, that's what I gotta do tonight. I told her, I said, I, I'm not sleeping nine hours. I know that machine may show that I got that thing on nine hours at night, meaning that I'm in the bed nine hours at night, but I'm doing good getting six hours of sleep every night. So anyway, 